Hey everybody, we're going to talk about a new plugin that I've been seeing lots of ads for. This is an algorithmic reverb plugin called Cleverb. It's by Clevgrand. We're going to try it out on a few different types of sound sources and then we're going to talk about, is this thing worth it? Let's dive in. So I've got here a basic, you know, up-tempo, chill house song. I'm gonna throw this reverb on a few different things and we're gonna dive into it. So here's the track on its own. Okay, so the first thing we wanna try it in uh, is a uh, vocal. So here's Cleaverb directly on the channel. So I'm gonna turn this up. So let's talk a little bit about what we're seeing here. So here's the user interface to this. Um, so right here is basically a stereoscopic uh, display of the signal. So if it's straight up and down, then that means it's mono. If it's circular or wide, then it's very stereo. Uh, here we've got EQing. So you've got early and late EQ. So I could shelf out or notch certain areas of the signal. Um, I've got the size. Uh, of the reverb. I've got the ability to set the length of the reverb. And then I've got my damping and diffusion. Um, damping, uh, according to the documentation, damping is basically like how the tail behaves. Um, the diffusion is, according to the documentation, diffusing removes transients to get the perception of a more or less dense reverb tail. Okay, so that's really interesting. Uh, then we've got the ducker, we've got modulation, and then we have just basic leveling. And then uh, a new uh, a new thing I think they did right here is they started including um, yeah, presets. So I'm gonna just hit play, and I'm gonna try to get this to be super duper in your face reverb. So 100% wet. So diffusion supposedly is touching those transients. So if I have it really high up, then it should feel a little bit softer. Okay, damping. Okay. So I could actually see this being useful for something like a drop where you want like a metallic kind of vibe to it because it's really tight and, and uh, pronounced early and late. Okay, so yeah, I can see you can actually get quite a lot out of this get really boomy um seems a bit high so i want to see if i can turn it down okay so ducker is really interesting uh because this seems like a convenience mechanism for something that i like to do a lot in my music and that is send a vocal to a reverb bus, um, and then I'll side chain the reverb with a compressor to the input of the vocal. So what that means is this, is that you get a really boomy, large, uh, present reverb, but when the voice is happening, it dips out, and then as soon as the voice stops, the reverb comes back in. The benefit of doing something like this is, is that you end up getting uh, that that lush, thick reverb sound, but it doesn't cost the mix, the vocal clarity. You can also do this with like rhythmic elements and things like this. Um, 
But what's really interesting here is they've included this in the actual plugin. Uh, if you try to use one reverb bus with side chaining on a bunch of different elements, the problem with that is, is unless you've like grouped and sent the, all those other elements into the side chain, then it's just not going to work with the side chain, no matter what you put it on, except for the original thing that you used as your side chain. So by having a ducker here, it eliminates all of that weird routing hassle. You have simple controls for ducking out the reverb. So let's listen to what that sounds like. So I'm going to set the threshold to zero, which means that this is just going to be ringing out all the time. Now I'm going to turn it up all the way. So whenever the voice is happening, you see that uh, this white line is indicating that it's crushing the signal and turning it off, basically. Uh, so we want to find a sweet spot. So I want to get it to a place where you can actually hear the vocal really well. You get just a tiny bit of reverb while the voice is happening. That sounds really good. Let's hear it in the mix. Yes, track. I've already set up one as a bus, as a send, so let's try that out. So when you're using it as a send, do you want to have dry completely off, wet completely up, the whole nine. Um, but essentially I'm doing the same thing, using a, a bit of threshold here on the ducker. Uh, I've got some dampening, pretty hot here. A diffusion, I haven't done any of that. And so I may actually try turning this up just to get rid of some of the sharpness of the c c consonants in my voice. Sounds clean. Okay, so let's try it on something else. I want to put it on, how about... Okay, I want to do something wacky. I'm going to try putting this on the entire bass bus. I've got I've called this the bass group, but essentially what's inside of it is a lot of mid-rangey synthesizers. So I'm going to try to do that, and I'm going to use the EQ to get rid of any kind of muddy, low-end uh, low reverb and see what happens here. So one observation I have is, is that the early and late, you can only choose one of the settings. So if I wanted to do a high or a low pass or a notch or even a shelf, I have to choose just that for the early and then just one for late. Um, I think if it were me, if I had my way, I would actually make each one of those independently uh, enableable so that way you can really craft the sound because I know for me sometimes I get things that are they build up in the in the low frequencies or maybe the highs and I also want to kind of notch out something in the middle um, I think for more flexibility that might be something they explore in the future um, not a huge deal though to be clear usually you want to throw this on a bus and then put an EQ after the reverb and do all of that stuff there. But, you know, if we're talking about making this ultra simplified user interface, 
that's designed to save you all this time and do it in there. So that sounds pretty good. Um, I, th I feel like I have enough control that if I really wanted to do something like this, I could dial it in and make it sound good. One thing that I am noticing now, uh, it, that the this algorithmic reverb that we've got here in Cleverb is a little bit metallic sounding. I can kind of hear the jaggedness of the tails. Um, that's something that I've noticed uh, happens in this class of reverbs. Like sometimes you get the really expensive ones, you hear a little bit less of that. Um, just an observation. So now I wanna try this on a pad. I wanna see if I can get rid of the sort of dorky dry pad that I've got here and make it a little bit more blendy. So that on its own is kind of like, hey, hey. it's like you can kind of hear like the trumpety noise of that. So what I want to do is to see if I can use the reverb to soften it up and make it feel a little bit more atmospheric. Let's give it a try. So I think that sounds pretty good. Let's hear it in the mix. So I tried it on vocals, I tried it on music, I tried it on uh, pads. Uh, I would say that between the EQ functionality, being able to see the stereo image, being able to control the transients and the diffusion, uh, all of that stuff, really great. Um, I think that you know, for plugins that are in the equivalent sort of tier in the market, this has more functionality than some of them. Um, not all, but what I really like about this plugin is the ducker. Um, because personally, since I actually sidechain reverbs a lot um, to the input sources, like a vocal into a reverb sidechained to the voice, boy, this is gonna save me a lot of time. So like in terms of time savings, this is pretty useful. So I think from that perspective, I'm pretty uh, excited about it. But how much does it cost? It says here that you can get it for your computer and you can also get it for iPad, but 60 bucks. I think that's a pretty good price. I mean, in that price point, you're kind of competing with things like all of the Valhalla reverbs, like perhaps even um, some of the Eventide stuff. Those are a little bit more expensive. And then it kind of gets more expensive from there. Um, the sound of the reverb is, I'm going to say I, it's like 80% thumbs up for me. I'd say there's a couple issues with just metallicness in that that's not my favorite thing but i'd say that you could definitely make it work with a lot of precise eqing um the thing that i love about this is the ducking and some of the controls so for that reason alone i would actually for that reason alone i would say it's probably worth the price if you're on the fence then check it out 
And you know, the last thing I would say is, is I'm a big fan of user interfaces that really kind of control what it feels like to hear that sound rather than like what specific things you're doing. And so this one is a little bit busy in terms of what's on the on the interface, but I would say I'm actually really excited about a lot of the other plugins that Clevgrand has made because the UIs are so oversimplified in a good way that um, I think they're thinking about the product design very uh, thoughtfully. It's really ergonomic and it, and it just makes a lot of sense the way that they're doing those things. Um, and so I encourage them to keep doing that. Uh, so good job, keep it up. Well, that's enough for me. I hope you found this useful. Make sure to like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Like. Subscribe, like and subscribe.